we're talking about what ails Kenya in this day and age and concerns being raised by some of my panelists that in this day and age, it's unfortunate that there are many who believe that you can only get development in your region if the president or maybe even if the governor comes specifically from your backyard. And why is this in 2021 in Kenya? CSLH, I want to get some thoughts from you on this. And, and uh, Senator Malala raised a, a, a question about <coughs> the balance in in the three sort of heads of government but i guess he was also taking us maybe to the public service as well is there a the face of unity across the public service as well and previous statistics have shown not as cis public service is that something that concerns your ministry absolutely a lot but let me start from where we stopped okay and say we want to finish this thing of uh, people talking the way we are thinking Jeanette talked we have to start from the top because even when you start telling people, Nini ni wageni mulikuja kwa serikali mulifanya nini, it's the same talk. So it has to stop both sides. There's no wageni kwa serikali. Everyone is of that government. And that is where they learn how to speak what we are saying. So the, the, the second thing, now let's go to this thing. And it's something that, uh, yes, I will agree with Malala, my senator, that we have to look at it. Let us not run away from the problems that we have. Let us face and say, we have done wrong. And I think uh, the, 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 the commission, the, the Public Service Commission, has been trying by now, ensuring they work with members of parliament so that from the constituents, when you look at now how they've been uh, doing recruitments, you'll find uh, across, down the level, they are trying now to build in an inclusive where every constituency you find someone has been picked to be employed. But then now, the question now goes, at the top, we still have the same challenge. Let's not lie. We still have the same challenge. And people question. People feel, that's how inclusivity, people feel, I am not included. I, I need my person <coughs> in that government. And even in Jubilee, we keep on uh, running away. People feel, when we were from 2013 to 2017, we did wrong. That's what they feel. But the president has tried his best to bring that face of Kenya. And that's why the president has, it has been his wish. And I will tell you, he has done his best. When you look at, when he really tries to bring in that balance, he tries his best to bring the balance. But then now the challenge will be the team that is putting up the paper. I mean, let's not lie. Uh, when I look at uh, the other day, the directors that were picked, it's not right. It's not right what they did. Because when you look at it across board, you will feel something is not right. That's why Kenyans become, again, very agitating. And they wonder, are we part of this thing? Do we really believe in what we say we are in a government that is our government? So do you think that whoever will become president next year? Yes. If it's William Ruto, if it's yes. Raila Odinga, if yes. it's Musale Mudavadi, and yes. we could go around the room, There's, there are so many who, who want that seat. Yes. But and the LB, but they will be under pressure to make sure... Oh, yes. The first under pressure is bring back the inclusivity of every Kenyan to feel... No, that their tribesmen are well represented in key seats in government. Wouldn't they feel that, <coughs> if, that there's pressure because previous regimes Waiga. had that? They will have pressure. And, and I think that is why I've always said, after the ruling of BBI, I learned that we have not comped our constitution. Parliament has power to make sure all these things work. Because if you bring a list for approval in parliament, it is parliament to just tell, no, this is not a regional balance of Kenya. Give us Kenya. We have Kenyan in every society who have gone to school who can serve. And so if you find seven names of one region, surely parliament, <coughs> why would you pass? The Constitution gives you that power. That is why you are there as a legislative parliament to help to ensure things that are not done well with the executive. With the parliament has to help us. And so parliament can stand firm, by the way, and just say, this is not a list that shows Kenya. But we the face of Kenya. For some reason, some of them have gone quiet. Senator, you know you can't speak before your former deputy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, unless he gives you permission. No, no, no. Sorry. Go, go ahead. Don't <laughs> yeah, first of all. And talk about the list. 36 names. So, so he claims 18 no, no, from no, one region. No, he's, he's a consumer of fake news. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> because uh, out of 34, only five are Kalenjins. 
out of 34. The rest are other candidates. This is in, in the UDA party? In the UDA party. I'm one of the four. So we, apart from you, three? Three others. Okay. Yeah, in, in lower positions. Maybe you'll give him the full list as he gives you his list because <laughs> you are saying his list. I don't know how true this is, Malala. You need to respond to that. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, n now, uh, I really appreciate what she's saying. She's being very open. Uh, there are ways, there are two ways. Uh, parliament has a limit to which they can also vet and uh, be able to see the national uh, diversity uh, being reflected. But there are also some other lower positions which are in house. And the office of the president, and I thought that is their ministry, ought to get all the names. Like uh, in 19, in 2003, we forwarded all the names of our proposed. <coughs> Uh, candidates for directors, for chairmen, for managing directors of various parastatos to the office of the president as a clearing house. So that when the names were released, I remember on the 17th of June, 2003, it was reflecting the diversity of Kenya. Because every ministry may want to address their immediate needs and every minister may want to please some of his constituents or some of the people that are close to him. But the office of the president of necessity should be able to be a clearing house to ensure that that national diversity is reflected. Mm. Now it boils down to the issue of leadership. If there is no proper leadership in the office of the president, and I'm not referring to the president, it must be somebody who is in charge of public service who must be able to go through this and realize if there are five directors, let's say in Kenjin, from one region, that is not right. Or if there are five directors in ADC from one region, <coughs> that is not right. It must reflect the diversity of this country. Is there a sense in which once you sit on that seat, you, you are under pressure, you are accused of betraying the interests of your community. I mean, let's, let's get real about this discussion. You've spoken about what should happen. You, but you sh we know that it hasn't happened. For example, when you were agriculture oh. minister, were, were lists brought you when you were told you must help your people at this time? No, there will be requests from Kenyans, from members of parliament, from other people in society. But uh, there is a way you can do. If I'm minister for agriculture, I can put... Uh, I can get a name from Coast, uh, from let's say Macquarie, for example, put in my ministry, have a name from, uh, from where I come from, give to Macquarie, so that at the end of the day, we are able to, to share out on the positions that we have. But the office of the president must also reflect the diversity of the country. We know certain communities represent 17% of Kenya, certain communities represent 13% of Kenya, so if you have 100 people or, or 200 people, you must get percentage-wise where do they come from, the overall list. It's not about uh, what happens in, in one ministry alone. It must be the overall list of those people in government. Okay. Uh, Fr Fred Okango, let me get your response yeah. to this before se senators really wanted to jump in. You <laughs> okay. Uh, Wahiga, you know, in this country, there is what we call the national values and principles of governance. And these are binding to every state officer and state organs. And there's a constitutional principle, Waiga, that says that in these appointments, there shall be regional and ethnic diversity of the people of Kenya. That is the law. However, Waiga, we have seen challenges. The challenges are, assuming today you look at the national executive that provides for the president, the deputy president currently, and a maximum of 22 cabinet secretary. That is the national executive. How many tribes do we have in Kenya? We have more than 45. Not all the 45 tribes can fit at the national executive. Uh, uh, Honorable Elachi just said the other time that we need to look at issues that affect all the tribes and make them inclusive. And in public service, they are guided also by the national values. Now, the reason why Honorable Lech was saying we have devolution was to cure such these challenges mm. so that we also now try and achieve what is called economic inclus inclusivity. Because what Honorable uh, Kiro has talked about is political inclusivity, which majority of Kenyans are fighting for. And that's why you see this jostling. People want to become running mates, people want to affiliate, and so on and so forth. But the biggest struggle 
that the strugglers movement are talking about today is the economic inclusivity. The economic exclusivity, we have struggled with it for the longest, and it must come to an end. Together that political e e exclusivity. Because we are saying, the moment the strugglers in the villages, in the wards, in the counties, can access government services at their doorsteps, can ensure that they enjoy those services as the provision of law, then we shall have broken the chain of economic inclusivity, I mean exclusivity. And therefore I say that, to me, I think while the political inclusivity is important mm. because it is a requirement in terms of elective and appointed positions, even though we have seen some of the board appointments being challenged in court because the names are, you know, from one region, Good. and you know, Mm -hmm. the, uh, never mind, they are not even on merit sometimes. We must now go for what the strugglers are calling economic inclusivity. That is the most important thing. In fact, if today all Kenyans from the, whatever village they come from had access to water, electricity, food, uh, you know, security, health, education, they will not even bother to know who is the president because they are enjoying what they need most. So to me, I believe that the day we achieve the economic inclusivity, which unfortunately is a product of political inclusivity, mm. then all the struggles that we are fighting for today shall have ended. Okay. Senator, now you uh, Six months ago, I tabled uh, a question understanding Order 48 uh, <coughs> on, uh, uh, to the Ministry of uh, Public Service uh, so that they can give us uh, a list of all public answers. Uh, <coughs> from lower uh, level to top management. And the results were shocking. You'll find, and I won't go to the details, you'll find that uh, certain communities have advantage over others in Kenya. But we have one body that has relegated itself to just following up politicians, talking about hate speech, and they have limited their mandate to that. This is the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. I think the National Cohesion and Integration Commission should go beyond just following politicians in, in, uh, in, in, political, in political rallies and looking at who is talking hate speech and who is not talking hate speech. They should go specific and ensure that all arms of the government, all entities of the government implement what we call inclusivity. And uh, it is uh, shocking, um, and I want to agree with my brother, yes, we need <coughs> economic inclusivity. But there is a thin line between political inclusivity True. and economic inclusivity. True. Political inclusivity affects directly economic inclusivity. Because once you appoint Kirwa as a, a, C a CS of education, when you go to the corridors of Jogo House, you will find all the Kip Kirwas, Kip Kalejins, <laughs> all of them there. Once you appoint Elachi, you will find all the Wamalwas and the Wanyonis in the corridors. And this reminds me, I went to Russia for an official visit and we, 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 we paid a courtesy call to the, to the ambassador, the, the, uh, the Kenyan ambassador to, to, to Russia. And when we got to the office, we asked him, come on. Is it possible you give us the list of all those students who have come here for, uh, for scholarship? scholarship? <coughs> you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked with that. I don't want to go into the details, but you'll be shocked with the list. Look at the promotions at, um, uh, uh, for example, the, the uh, uh, principals and head teachers in this, in this republic. You'll find that there's a certain <coughs> community which is advantaged. <coughs> now, we got an appointment of uh, the CS Defense. Even us, we will go to uh, uh, CS Eugene Omalu and say, in the coming recruitment, we want Wanyonyi, we want Wafulas to be more than the Kipkirwas and those others. Because people believe that once you are appointed in a certain political office, you need to help your people. There is that political demand from your people. If you don't help your people, then you become a, a zombie, you become a political zombie. You challenge Kirwa to tell us the top leadership, he said 34, Four are only one tribe. Let's talk about uh, ANC. What are your numbers? Uh, we Someone has sent me a list. Is it? I don't know if it's fake news. You know, you From know. Your, depu <laughs> your deputy, your secretary, your executive mm. director, your chair, women's league, your organizing secretary, uh, one community. No, 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 it's not one community. You know, our party leader is called Honorable Msaliam Davadi. Mm -hmm. our, we have two deputy party leaders. We have Captain Yare from Northeastern, and we have Tandaza from Kwale. Nasabula. Yes, Savula is not is not the deputy party leader, and 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 Wahiga, Wahiga, you are here with uh, our party leader. He said that our party is national, and 
our two official deputy party leaders in ANC, Captain Yare from Northeastern and Andre Botandaza from Kwale. When you look at our Secretary General, Simon Kagure from Central Region, and we have many and many and many other organizing secretary, Mwakiringo from Taita Taveta. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is just, uh, these are normal uh, fake news and rumors <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that ANC, like <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that ANC is, is, a, is, is just a one region party. No, our party is a national party and we are encouraging people to join our party and even opening up. We shall be opening up spaces. When you look at our national youth leader, comes from Nyanza. <laughs> So, so tell me. So is this it, list is fake news. It's it, fake it, news. Uh, uh, I wish I could uh, get the name here of, of it's, the. It's viewer. always fake till it's not fake. No, it's fake news because I've told you the 